Hey guys, Kakarot1970 again with another question of the week. And one question I'm immediately going to answer is, yes, I got a haircut. Uh, so this week we're going to do it a little bit differently rather than answering one or two or like three bigger questions. I'm going to be following Mason Perkins' suggestion and answer multiple, well, more smaller questions. So I will also not be having any timestamps right here because, well, it's going to be a lot of questions. So let's immediately get on with the first question, kind of related to a previous question of the week video. So I told you guys before that I am a Belgian and just to confirm, I am on the Flemish slash Dutch speaking side. But yes, I do also speak French, which is why I have French manga and why I had like French manga in some of my Gundam lore videos. And I speak a little, little bit of German. And staying with the Belgian theme, Mike Perez asked me if Neo-Belgium's Gundam annoyed me. And honestly, out of all of the stereotypes they could have gone with, chocolate, beer, French fries, um, I think weapons probably made for the coolest Gundam that could have happened. Like, just look at the Netherlands and, yeah, I'm really happy with what we got. The Browning Gundam is cool, so I'm super happy they went with that. Also, Belgium, even though we're not really known for, well, even though not a lot of people immediately associate Belgium with weapons, we have a very healthy weapons industry with uh, Fabrique Nationale. And the funny thing is, before I knew about the Browning Gundam, I didn't even know about like FN and how they own the Browning Arms Company, which is quite funny. So Gundam taught me something about my own country. That's how much Belgium is known for its weapons. Next up, we have a question from Slypmon. Which is more volatile, a Salamis or a Leo? And well, I guess that depends on who the pilot of the Leo is or who the captain of the Salamis is. Then the next question is from True Blue Fanon. Why Japanese fans seem to prefer Gundam Seat mobile suits over Iron-Blooded Orphans mobile suits? And well, if it's any consolation, uh, when I was working at the Gundam Cafe, are Iron-Blooded Orphans events also attracted a lot of people. So Iron-Blooded Orphans is plenty popular in Japan too. And then staying kind of in that realm of popularity, we have Jessen Handy or Handy's question, why Crossbone hasn't yet been made into an anime? And going by the amount of model kits they're getting, it definitely seems to be a popular enough anime, uh, manga, I mean. So the Two things I could only think of is either the model kits are already selling well enough, so Bandai doesn't really feel, or like Sunrise doesn't really feel the necessity to make an anime because unfortunately, oftentimes the anime is just there to push out more mobile suits. Model kit sales, I mean, or add more mobile suits <laughs> so that they can make more model kits to sell. And the second reason I could think of is, well, Tomino doesn't really like Victory Gundam and Crossbone is like closely related to Victory Gundam, so I don't know, maybe that's somehow related. Conspiracy theories. Next up, we have Warlord Kalithar. How many times did Makuve screw over Zeon? Honestly, I've lost count. Moving right along to Is Blue Destiny Unit 1 a Gundam or a Gym? Asked by Bennett Huntley, and it's very simple really, it's um, the body of, it's a modified body of a ground Gundam and it's the head of a gym. So it's mostly a Gundam, although I have even seen people argue that like, oh, the RX-78-9, it's, it's such a weak Gundam, it's not even really a Gundam, but like it is what it is. The ground Gundam is most definitely a Gundam. Um, so by that reasoning, uh, Blue Destiny Unit 1 is also most definitely a Gundam. It's basically the same as like the gym head from the OA Themestium, the one that Karen pilots. And since we're talking about Blue Destiny, I think this is the perfect segue to video games. The first one comes from Derek Daraway. Daraway, um, have I ever heard of Ace Combat? And... I most definitely have. Um, I really like these two games for the PSP. These are the only two ones I've played so far, but I did manage to pick some up for the PlayStation. I think I have most of the ones for PlayStation 2 now, because uh, um, in the past, I really like going to yard sales and I found a lot of PlayStation 2 games. They're super cheap, so I will try to find some time to play all of them eventually. For now, I'm going to try to find time to play this one right here. Then we have Adam the Black Mage's question. Do I have any experience with the Xenogears, Xenosaga, or Xenoblade franchise and its mecha? 
and the quest the the answer is kinda. So when it comes to Xeno Gears, I don't know anything about those games, haven't played them yet, although they do look interesting, so I might also play them eventually, but that's like on my extremely long list of games I eventually want to play. Then next up, Xeno Saga. That's a little bit higher on my I want to play list because I am kind of familiar with Cosmos from that game because she appeared in like Super Robot Wars Endless Frontier. That was an amazing game. I loved the gameplay. The story was wacky in a good way. So I do have some experience with it. And then next up we have, uh, you asked about Xenoblade. And the funny thing is I actually bought Xenoblade Chronicles for the 3DS, but I haven't played that one yet. So that's also on my extremely long list of I want to eventually play that. And talking about things that I eventually want to play, a lot of people have been asking me about um, Gundam Battle Operation 2 and if I'm playing it or not. The thing is, I do not have a PlayStation 4, so I unfortunately do not play the game at the moment. If it eventually gets released on Steam, which I guess not, or just on PC, on whatever platform, um, then I would probably consider playing it, but as of now, uh, it's a no. I also don't have any plans to immediately buy a PlayStation 4. I just upgraded uh, my PC for into a better 4K editing rig, so... Also, in addition to that, the first console I'll be picking up in the far future will probably be a Switch. So, and then Requiem Max noticed that there is a Risei Kujikawa figurine in my background. So his question was, do I like Persona? And man, I love Persona. It's all started with Persona 4. Um, well, Persona 4 the Golden that I bought for the Vita. And at that time, I like, I didn't really know a lot of Persona. Um, I knew it was a thing, and like, I also didn't really have any amazing games from my Vita yet. And man, when I bought Persona, well, Persona 4, I fell in love with Persona 4 and my Vita. It was such an amazing game. It's probably one of my top favorite games ever. And that game, along with E7 and Steins Gate, really became like my favorite games on that system. And it's partially thanks to Persona 4 The Golden actually that I love the Vita as much as I do. Uh, the Vita is also one of my favorite consoles of all time now. Um, so yeah, I definitely love Persona. Um, after I played Persona 4 through all the way, I immediately bought Persona 3 Portable for the PSP and played through that as well. And I haven't played Persona 5 yet, but the first thing I want to do now is play through Persona 4 again. Because I didn't really play through it that well, I just kind of... Not really rushed through it, but I didn't really do all of the side thingies. And I did not unlock, like, the best ending you could get. In fact, in the first time I played it, I unlocked the bad ending where someone really important dies. And I was really bummed out, like, until I figured out like two or three days later that that wasn't actually the ending I was supposed to unlock. Um, yeah, I was quite mortified when I thought that that was the actual ending of the game. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but I'm pretty sure everyone who's played it knows what I'm talking about. That was a big shock. Um, also, I don't only have a resave figure in the background. There's actually one sitting right next to me too. And um, a lot of other people have also noticed the other figurines in my background. So going from left to right, the first one is Alicia Malkiot from Valkyria Chronicles. I don't think anyone made a comment about her yet. Valkyria Chronicles, again, one of my all-time favorite games. It's such an awesome game. The anime is a bit more... Mm, but the game, I really like how it blends first-person shooting and strategy together, which are two of my favorite genres, so it made for an amazing game. The story is also really cool, highly replayable, and just great all around. And then next to her, we have Asuka. Of course, a lot of people noticed Asuka, because we are all people of culture around here. Um, Misaka Mikoto and off camera slightly oh no wait she was on camera um we also have kagami from lucky star now that was a collaboration with kankole um i don't really know a lot about kankole but i just like kagami from lucky star and of course lucky star ah uh, 
childhood anime. Jeez, I just love the 2006 like anime sphere. That's so nostalgic to think about. So I like to have some Lucky Star figurines flying around. Oh, also, um, a few like one person also noticed my Ayane poster. Am I putting it in? Yeah, my Ayane poster. That one actually has a really funny story. So the thing was, a long, long, long time ago, um, I bought the Mercurius and the V8 model kits on eBay, and the guy selling them, he had this promotion where he would give a Gundam War card with every model kit you bought. But he ran out of cards for my order, so instead of giving me two Gundam War cards, he gave me the, Yon the Ayane poster instead. And the funniest thing is, I did not ask for that poster, I didn't tell him that I wanted that specific poster, but I really like Dead or Alive, and Ayane is by far my favorite character. And that is all for this week's Question of the Week. Next week I will again be doing the usual format where I answer like only a few bigger questions, but in the future I will still be doing these episodes where I tackle multiple smaller questions. So if you had a small question and I haven't answered it yet, don't worry. I'll get to it. It's just going to be in one of the next episodes. So if you have a question you want me to answer, be it a big or small, definitely leave a comment down below. Maybe give a few of your own opinions about some stuff that I mentioned. Anyways, that's all for this question of the week. A big thank you to the people who left comments, who asked questions. And of course, as always, another big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope all of you watching have a great day. And I'll see you all next time.